Today, we're going to have a look at and try and fix an all-in-one computer made by Apple, and it's not an iMac. It's an eMac. So it's quite obvious where Apple got their inspiration from for the eMac. This is the original iMac. Built-in CRT screen on the computer and everything. It's all in one box, so all you had to do was plug it in and you're good to go. And it was a sales success and very much a fashion icon in its time. But like all things in the technology world, time marches on quickly and so the iMac became outdated. Gone was this built-in heavy CRT screen and Apple released, of course, the G4 iMac. This one up here. Now, that iMac was a revelation because it had an LCD screen and while it was uh, quite cool on its articulated arm, it also made it expensive. So what Apple decided to do was reimagine the iMac as the eMac. E stands for education. And their goal was to get these things in schools. And essentially it's the same guts, the same internals as that G4 iMac up there. But they put it in the older technology CRT body and uh, all in one again. So all you need to do is plug in a keyboard and a mouse and a power cable and you're good to go. And it was a big success. Introduced in 2002, they sold all the way through to 2006. The last version to be produced, which is the one I have here, has a 1.42 gigahertz G4 processor in it, making it pretty powerful for the day. So this machine was produced all the way through to 2006 when it was replaced really by the G5 iMac, which you can see over my shoulder up here. Now, LCD technology had got a lot cheaper at this stage and they were able to produce a all-in-one computer to meet the price point for both education and premium home use. So with that said, let me clean up the desk and we can start taking a look at this gorgeous eMac. Now, just a bit of trivia, it is the last Mac ever made with a CRT screen it, uh, it's a heavy beast, it weighs about 23 kilo, but it might be the last Mac made with a CRT screen. It is the first Mac ever to have aluminium on the outside. See that little panel there? That was the forerunner of many things to come when it came to Mac. So how did this particular eMac come into the position of the basement? Well, I was contacted by a gentleman who wanted to swap it for an old iMac I was trying to sell. And, uh, and I said, yeah, I'll be interested. I haven't got one of these Emacs at, in the basement and uh, it'll be a nice little addition. So anyway, he rings back a bit later and says, uh, the deal's off because it's, it turns on, but something weird happens and it starts beeping and all this text comes up on the screen and it's obviously broken. And I said, well, I might still be interested. Do you still want the iMac? And he said, no, but you can have it for 20 bucks. So I head over there and give him 20 bucks and I took the old girl home. As you can see, it's pretty filthy, but cosmetically, everything seems to be there and there's nothing damaged or broken. So that's a good start. Uh, but the real test is what's gonna happen when we turn it on. So why don't you come along with me for the ride and we'll investigate exactly what kind of condition this eMac is in and whether or not we can fix it. Let's hit the power button and see what happens. three beeps and that's it. Now I don't know a whole lot about these things but to me that could indicate a memory issue so that's going to be the first thing I'm going to look at is swapping out the memory and then we'll see what happens from there. Right so I've put the unit on its side and you can see there's a little door on the bottom here that uh, allows us I'm pretty sure to get to the RAM under there. Let's undo the screw here and see what's under this hatch. It's a captive screw, so it's not gonna go anywhere, which is handy. Put that aside. Okay, and we can see that there's some RAM under there. We've got one stick in the machine. It can take two. I believe the maximum RAM that these machines can handle is two gig. I found my big box of RAM. Okay, first go lucky, there we go. Uh, one gig stick, one gig stick, let's put them both in. Of course, I've got no guarantee that these work. Um, I should probably put them in one at a time to verify, but I like to live on the edge, so I'm gonna whack them both in, um, fire it up, and see if we can get this eMac to boot. 
Okay, everything's set at home. Let me clean up this big pile of RAM and we'll flip it over, plug it in and see if it boots. Okay, we'll put some power in the side here. Let's hold down the power button. Let's see what happens. Hey, we've got a boot chime, so that is a good start. I can hear the hard drive spinning up. Our lights on solid, screen's on, and Apple logo. So that's some good news. Now, you can see some flickering probably on the footage, but I can't see any flickering on the screen itself, so it's just a mismatch in the frame rates of the CRT and the rate that I'm filming on. So great, there we have it, the Mac login screen. So uh, it's still got the login details of the person that sold it to me. He wants to get his files back, so what I'm going to do is remove the hard drive for him and uh, give him that hard drive and I'm going to do a fresh install on this machine anyway. Uh, but for now, uh, I think we have determined that it is working. The memory was the only issue, so I'll power it down. We'll pull it apart, get the hard drive out, put a fresh hard drive in and clean it as we go. I've flipped the unit down face down on this rag to stop it getting scratched as we move it around on the desk. Now the first thing you should do obviously with any plug-in equipment is unplug that equipment. Uh, whether you have 110 volt or 240 volt like we have here in Australia, uh, it's enough to kill you so make sure that's unplugged. The other thing to be aware of with anything to do with a CRT screen is it retains a lot of voltage inside the tube. Um, so don't go sticking your fingers or screwdrivers or any other metal thing in places where they shouldn't go or you could be in for a nasty surprise. So to take this apart, we're gonna undo all of these screws around the bottom edge. So we'll do that now and then lift this cover off and see where we get to. Okay, I guess it looks like these little feet have to come off as well. So it's loose. I think we have some wires going to this switch though, so let's just get it up and see if we can see in there. And unplugged it. So it has a little plug that goes in the back of that switch. This just comes out quite easy. And we can see just how dirty and dusty. Look at that fan. It's pretty gross. So like I say, we'll definitely clean this machine. And the next step is to take this off. And they're just Phillips head screws. Mm, look at that dust. So I think before we take this apart, we're gonna to have to remove this fan assembly. Uh, we'll start with the cable, take power off. Looks like, uh, are we free? No, we're cable tied. Where's my pliers? Okay, I found these, so they'll do the job. One fan assembly. Uh, that'll go in the cleaning pile over here. So this is sort of the danger zone in here, don't go sticking your finger in there, this can still retain a lot of voltage. Um, I did find that out the hard way once when I was a kid. I desperately wanted to find out what was under this rubber thing that was on the uh, CRT I was looking at. So I, I wedged a screwdriver underneath to pry it off and there was a big flash, a big explosion and the screwdriver flew out of my hands. There's a lot of power under there so just be aware you can kill yourself going under there. Right, so with that warning out of the way, let's continue to pull this thing apart. Now if we have a look underneath here, there's four connectors under here, they all need to come out. So, let's see if we can pull them out while I'm holding it here. So you can see that's the area that I'm talking about there, so we'll make sure that they're all out of the way. And the power button cable was tucked in here uh, when I pulled the lid off, but I untucked that as I took the lid off 
uh, before I unplugged it. So you need to take that out of there too if you're pulling one of these apart, just so you know. So next, we're gonna to have to undo some screws that are holding the motherboard in place. And I think it's these ones. Well, let's undo them and see what happens. Now in theory, it should just slide out. Oh, here it comes. Just comes off like that. Whoa, that was easy. And there we have it. The guts of the EMAC. So there's the hard drive. It's uh, pretty difficult to get to location. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, that's a pretty random spot to put it, but hey, we're in now. And I do wonder if while we're here, it would make sense to put new thermal paste on under here where the heat sink is because this could probably be quite old thermal paste and I'm guessing the process is under here and I'm not sure what that heat sinks for and who knows what that is but uh, if you want to find that out you can google that stuff um, I'm just trying to make this thing work again okay to get the hard drive out you've got to take the little caddy apart um, how's that plugged in down the bottom that's a weird cable I wonder if we should unplug it from down here hard drives free so I'll um, package this up and get it back to the owner and um, he can happily get all his files and things back off because um, he wasn't able to turn this machine on and rescue any of the data so now he can have it here he can just put that in an enclosure and uh, grab all that data okay i've got some of this uh, cooler master thermal compound i found lying around so i'm going to have a go at reapplying the thermal paste underneath this um, which means we've got to get this clip off i'm not quite sure how we do that probably just hack at it with a screwdriver like i'm doing is it maybe not okay looking at the back there's a clip there's a clip here if you can see that so we'll unclip it oh there's a reset button i don't know what happens when you push that oh, who knows so take the clip out Got a screw on the other end. Note to self, uh, undo all the screws first. Heat pipe off. So you can see the underneath of the heat pipe there and the old thermal paste is pretty dry and gross. So we'll get some isopropyl alcohol and we'll clean that up and throw this back on. put the perfect amount on here please comment below if you have any opinion of how much should go on so what we'll do now is we'll fire up the compressor take all these bits outside and start blowing all the dust out just give everything a good clean before it goes back together right we are ready to clean some of this dust off so I've put things sort of back together a bit. Uh, we've put the new hard drive in. I had a 250 gig hard drive lying around, which is an IDE drive, so I've popped that back in. I've also put this clip back on the heat sink, which I forgot to put on uh, before, so that holds that down nice and tight against the processor. We can see we've got the heat sink here. It's still a little bit dusty, so I've got my handy little vacuum with this little brush nozzle. So we'll just give that a bit of a clean up 
and then we'll look at replacing the battery while we're in here as well. Great, nice and clean. So if we have a look in here, we can see the battery. I would say that that's the original battery, well due for replacement. So let's pull that out. I'll put the multimeter on it and we'll just check that it is indeed uh, no good anymore. Right, so we're getting 0.01 to 0 volts. This battery is had it. So thankfully, I have another battery which I've got in advance anticipating that we need to swap this one. So same sort of battery, let's just double check. And 3.6 volts, which is what we're supposed to be getting. So we'll pop that in and that should solve any problems with the time and the date not being quite correct each time we start it. So that, there we go, all done. It's nice that they included a replaceable battery. Sometimes you pull these old computers apart and they've got a soldered battery or something equally as annoying. Uh, makes it a little more difficult, but this is a nice easy one to change. So it makes sense to do it while we're in here. fan's nice and clean it was pretty filthy so it's going to run a lot happier now and uh, hopefully be a bit quieter as well let's start with putting this back on now remember this socket here has to go in this plug here so let's try that and see if we can get it working so I've played around with it a bit and I think I've got it on there I've just done these top screws up first and the bottom kind of pushes in and it feels like that plug is um, going in in the back there. I'll finish off uh, tightening these screws and putting the others around and fingers crossed it's going to work. I guess uh, there's only one way to find out isn't there, we'll put it back together and see if we've got any screen happening. Next is this fan assembly, now looking a fair bit cleaner than it was. Still a little bit dusty but uh, only so much we can do with that disassembling it fully and giving it a clean and there's only so much I've got patience for so we'll leave it at that so the case is dry looking pretty clean um, as clean as we're going to get it I'm pretty happy with that. So let's slide it back over, making sure that we connect that power button as we go. Feels pretty good. Let's get the screws back in and fire it up and see how we get on with the new drive. Okay, I made a slight mistake here. These are supposed to be little plastic feet, so I'll just back them out, put the proper ones in. Almost there, got the last piece to put together, give that a quick clean. And we are back together. So let's get it the right way up. You should never move a CRT after you've turned it on. It can make the colours go pretty weird. So we'll get it in the right spot, sitting up the right way, plug it in turn it on and by rights we should get a question mark symbol because this is a blank hard drive there's nothing on it so it should find the hard drive but say it can't load anything so fingers crossed that's what we're going to get okay let's put the power in hopefully there's no sparks bangs or explosions all good so far let's hit the power button no chime that's a worry. The screen doesn't appear to be coming on and we've got no flashy light either. 